Hello and welcome to today's lecture on circularly polarized microstrip antenna. In the last lecture, we started discussing about circularly polarized microstrip antenna and we did look into why we need circularly polarized antenna instead of linearly polarized antenna because if we use circularly polarized antenna, then the orientation of the receiving antenna, if it is linearly polarized, it does not really matter, it will still receive the full signal. And then we looked into how we can realize circularly polarized microstrip antenna using a very simple technique by feeding a square microstrip antenna with two orthogonal feeds with one angle 0 and one angle 90 degree. Instead of a square microstrip antenna, we also saw that we could use circularly microstrip antenna by using two orthogonally feed. And the reason for that is that a square microstrip antenna, if you feed along let us say in one axis along the center, then the null will be there in at the perpendicular direction. So, for example, if this is a rectangular microstrip antenna, we feed here that will excite this particular plane which is a E plane and along the center there will be a null. And if you feed at this particular point, there will be a null in the other direction. So, by feeding at those two points with one angle 0, one angle 90 degree, we saw that we could get circular polarization and LHCP or RHCP can be obtained which is left hand circularly polarized or right hand circularly polarized antenna can be obtained simply by using feeds like one angle 0, one angle 90 or one angle 0, one angle minus 90 degree. Then we also saw how this uh, power divider network can be realized and we actually saw that a two branch coupler meets the requirement. A two branch coupler gives us equal output as well as 90 degree phase difference. And then we looked into it that that particular thing if it is done in the same plane will actually occupy much larger space. So, in order to reduce the overall area of the antenna, then what we had looked into a configuration where 3 dB 2 branch coupler was realized at the bottom layer and then the square patch was put on the top layer in an inverted configuration and by connecting those output of the coupler to the feed point location, we saw that we could get very broad band circularly polarized microstrip antenna. Then we also looked into how we can get circular polarization using single feed microstrip antenna. So, we will continue from there. So, let us just look at the configurations which we had looked in the last lecture. So, these were nearly square patch, I will just go through one more time. So, this length is L1, this length is L2 and the ratio of L1 by L2 should be approximately equal to 1.01 to 1.10 depending upon the bandwidth of the antenna and bandwidth is determined by the substrate parameter. So, if epsilon r is low and substrate is thick, then it will have a higher bandwidth. So, in that case, we will have a ratio which could be maybe close to 1.05 or so, but if the bandwidth is less, then the ratio should be small. And then we notice that by feeding this particular antenna along the diagonal, so what really happens at let us say if we assume L1 is longer than L2, then for L1, frequency f1 will be lower and at l2 frequency will be higher. So, when l1 is getting excited at lower frequency and since the feed is along the diagonal, uh, this particular polarization will be there and that is how the radiation dominant will come from the f1. As frequency increases, then what happens? l2 will become resonant. So, then this particular portion will become dominant. So, from horizontal it will go to vertical, but in between it will go to circular when the frequencies of f1 and f2 will be relatively close and we had seen the resonance curve also that when the resonance crossover takes place at that particular point we will get axial ratio. Now, instead of using a nearly square patch, one can also use a square patch with two steps. So, basically now this will be one dimension and this dimension will be slightly more. So, that means frequency will reduce and we again feed along the diagonal. In this case, instead of 
adding a stub, a notch has been cut over here. So, this length will be less, this length is going to be more. Now, instead of that here, one can also chop the corners and by cornering, cutting the chops along the corner, we have a one diagonal length and we have another diagonal length. So, this diagonal length will be smaller, giving rise to a slightly different frequency compared to this diagonal length. So, we are feeding in between the two. So, again this will be let us say 45 degree leading, this will be 45 degree lagging and the net result will be 90 degree phase difference. Instead of chopping the corner, we can also cut a notch in the corner with the similar effect. Instead of that, we can even cut a slot here. So, in this case, we will have a diagonal length which will go like this and come over here and another diagonal length will go like this, move like this here and then goes there. So, two diagonal lengths are different and we are feeding in between the two diagonal lengths. Then we had seen what is the effect of the length L2. So, we have taken a fixed length of L1 and these plots are for different values of L2. So, just to quickly go through, so L1 was 3 centimeter, feed position is along the diagonal and these are the substrate parameter and since H is relatively small, so that is why it has a narrower bandwidth and hence we have taken three different values which are relatively close to L1. So, these are 2.9, 2.92, to 2.95. So, corresponding to 2.9, we can actually see that there is a small loop there. For 2.92, that loop is reduced to kink and then for 2.95, you can see that even the loop is not there, just little bit bend is there. And if this becomes 3, then this will become a square patch and there will not be any kink or any bend also. Now, corresponding to these three curve, we get the best AR which is over here and this particular case corresponds to when there is a kink over here. Basically, what this kink implies that over here one of the patch length was dominant and here there is a transition took place, other patch length is dominant and at this particular point where there is a transition, the amplitude will be approximately equal and hence it is giving a good AR. Now, if you look at here corresponding to this curve here, uh, this is the VSWR curve. So, you can see that this is VSWR equal to 2 over here. So, we can see it has a much larger bandwidth than corresponding to the axial ratio less than 3 dB bandwidth. So, we can actually say that even though this has a larger VSWR bandwidth, but it is not a very useful bandwidth because at this particular frequency, which is a lower frequency, L1 will be resonant. So, this polarization will be dominant. At the higher frequency, this will be dominant. So, that will give rise to a vertical polarization and only in between this smaller portion where we can see that axial ratio is less, we will get a circular polarization. Now, this particular loop over here, that actually gives a much larger VSWR less than 2 bandwidth, but it is not at all a useful bandwidth because the polarization dominant here will be horizontally polarized, then circularly polarized and then vertically polarized. So, it is not a very good antenna because the pattern is not symmetrical. Now, for this particular feed and L1, L2, we get LHCP which is left hand circular polarization. So, instead of feeding along this diagonal, if we feed along this diagonal over here, somewhere here, then we will get right hand circular polarization. Now, even for this feed point, we took L2 which is smaller than L1. If we take L2 larger than L1, that means instead of 2.92, let us say if we take this as close to say 3.1. In that particular case, what we will get will be a right hand circular polarization. So, one has to be careful to know what kind of a polarization we will get it. So, now let us just look at another configuration and this is a nearly square ring microstrip antenna. Let me first explain when we discuss about compact microstrip antenna, we had actually seen that in a rectangular patch, if we cut a slot in between, it becomes like a ring microstrip antenna 
then what really happens? We notice that it actually becomes a compact microstrip antenna. Okay, so now over here, now this particular length has been taken as L1, here it is L2, and these, this is actually taken as a square. So that is a L and L, and we feed along the diagonal, and here we can get an impedance matching. Now there are several variations possible over here. Instead of using L1, L2, we can use square patch with diagonal cut or we can use square patch with corner chop and other possibilities are there. Or we can do another thing, we can take outer one as a square patch, that means L1 is equal to L2, but here we can take L1 and L2 which are different values. So then what happens, even then we can get a circular polarization. But now we had also seen that for a compact microstrip antenna, when this particular thing increases significantly, which is the case over here, we can see that a much larger slot has been cut inside the patch. So in this case, what happens? Impedance will not be equal to 50 ohm, just like what we could get here with the matching. So over here, a quarter wave transformer has been used to do the impedance matching. And again, as I mentioned before, L1, L2 can be square, then this will be nearly square or it can be corner chopped or other configurations we looked into it. So it is not that we can only use uh, variations of square, we can also use the variations of circle and triangle also. So here is a configuration which is a elliptical microstrip antenna. So what we really have here is a major axis is 2A minor axis is 2B. So the ratio of major axis to minor axis again should vary between 1.01 to about 1.1 depending upon the bandwidth of the circular microstrip antenna. Instead of using a circle or a here we can say ellipse, we can also use a circle with notches cut in between. So what really happens now? So along this dimension, length will be equal to the diameter, but over here length will be slightly different and we are feeding in between the two. Instead of cutting a notch, we can also add a stub or we can cut a slot in between. So basically path length this side and the path length this side will be different and we can get circular polarization. And again, instead of using a circular patch, we can also use triangular patch and its variation. So this is an equilateral triangular microstrip antenna, but it is nearly equilateral. Why? Now S1 and S1 are equal, S2 is different. So this again is to be chosen such a way, just like in the case of elliptical or nearly square. So the ratio of the two again should be between 1.01 to 1.1. And then one can use a uh, chopped triangle tip here, which is equilateral triangle, just similar to this here, or one can cut a slot here, or one can not cut a notch in between. I generally do not recommend triangular microstrip antenna because it is not a symmetrical configuration. So hence, it does lead to a higher cross polar. So I generally recommend that you can use the variations of square microstrip antenna, or you can use variation of circular microstrip antenna. Let us look at some more compact circularly polarized uh, configuration. So here there are variations of square microstrip antenna. So just to mention here what we have. So here there is a length L and this is also length L. So it is a square microstrip antenna and in the square microstrip antenna four slots have been cut here. So here you can see that this length is LX, so these two are same and these two lengths are LY. You can just imagine for a minute that if these two slots are not there, if these two slots are not there, then what will happen? This actually looks like a H shaped patch and we had discussed about H shaped patch. So H shaped patch is relatively more compact compared to the square microstrip antenna because Imagine again, this is not there. So this will be the one path and then the path will be something like this here. So path length has increased, path length has increased, so resonance frequency will reduce. 
So now instead of thinking this, you now think about this is not there. So now the path length will be like this here, path length. So this will be, you can say, rotated edge. Now when we have slots cut on both the side, you can just say that it is a modified edge configuration in both this plane as well as in this plane. And we have chosen LX not equal to LY so that the two path lengths will be different. And if the two path lengths are different, resonance frequency will be different and we can feed along the diagonal to get circular polarization. Again, there are a lot of variations possible here. One can take all these four, sometimes people also call these slits are cut in the patch. Sometimes it is also known as a deep notches are cut in the patch, but basically meaning the similar thing. So here now, we can also do that LX equal to LY can be taken and then this can be taken as L1 and this can be taken as L2. Or one can take L and L here, one can have a notches over here and so on. So there are lots of possibilities are there to do the variation. But just to tell you here, so one can get a compact circularly polarized microstrip antenna using this configuration. This is another configuration which is a fairly compact configuration. Now let's just first see here. So we, if you think that this is not there, just imagine that this is not there. In that case then, this will be one length and this will be the another length. And that is why the feed is put between the two diagonals to get circular polarization. Now by cutting these slots in between, there are four of them are there, so that it is symmetrical configuration. So in this case now the path length will be not straight from here to here, but it's going to be like this here. It will go around, it will go around and then come back over here. So path length has increased significantly and hence resonance frequency reduces. Again, we can think about lot of variation. So here it is a square patch with notches. One can use L1, L2 and then we can have things over here or we can take these lengths different. We can take a square patch and so on. But I just want to tell you in all of these cases, whether you uh, take L1, L2 or you take L with a notch and so on, variation in the performance is relatively very, very small. And this kind of an antenna is actually very useful for, let's say, for example, a GPS antenna. Now that is a global positioning system and the frequency of that is 1575 megahertz and the bandwidth is plus minus 10 megahertz. So the total bandwidth is about 20 megahertz. That's about just about close to 1.4 percent of this, which is relatively small bandwidth. So one can use some of these configuration. Okay. Now in this particular case here for GPS application, the receive antenna should be right hand circularly polarized antenna. So now let us just look into it. So by using this kind of a configuration, we can realize a compact antenna. Everybody wants a compact antenna for GPS application. Just think about your mobile phone. GPS antenna is inside that. As it is inside the mobile phone, there are plenty of antennas are there. There are antennas for 2G application. There may be antennas for 3G. Now 4G is coming, then it should also have a Wi-Fi antenna. So, so many antennas are inside your mobile phone. So we do want all these antennas to be compact and hence this particular thing finds a lot of application. In fact, even think about, you might have seen something active GPS also. So they also use nearly square microstrip antenna, but on a relatively thick substrate. And they use generally high dielectric constant substrate. Some of them use alumina substrate, which has epsilon r equal to 10. Some of them use a substrate which has an epsilon r close to 6. And of course, you can use the techniques which I mentioned. You can cut slots or slits and that way you can realize compact microstrip antenna. Now, instead of using a square variation, we can also use the circular variation. And I just want to tell that many of these variations are actually important depending upon where you want to install these antennas or where you want to put these antennas. So here are the compact CP-CMSA variation with slits or slots. So here 
what we have? We have a circular patch over here and in the circular patch these equal dimension slots are cut here. And here a stub has been added to do the tuning. So, one can actually see that the two orthogonal dimensions will now be not same and we feed along the center of these two dimensions. And since we are feeding it over here at the periphery, at the periphery input impedance will be very high. So, a lambda by 4 quarter wave transformer has been used to do the impedance transformation to match with 50 ohm. So, here again we could have had lot of variation. You do not need to have a this kind of a thing here. These two slots could have been of different dimension or instead of taking a circle, this could have been taken as a ellipse also and that also could have given circular polarization. Now, instead of using uh, these you can say plus kind of a slot, one can also cut slot along the periphery. So, here we have a circular patch with these slots which are curved slots and this one here is cut basically to do the impedance matching from here, but this is mainly for circularly polarized tuning. Okay. So, by cutting this particular thing, changing this dimension, it is easy to do the tuning of the antenna to obtain proper or good circularly polarized antenna. So, we had also seen this configuration for rectangular ring. Here it is a circular ring. So, again we know this will be a compact configuration and this is another variation that where it is fed over here and here and in this particular point you can even use a lambda by 4 transformer if required to transform the impedance and over here what you can see that this is a one small length here and this is a relatively larger length. So, this larger length should be equal to this smaller length plus lambda by 4 so that it provides 90 degree phase difference. So, again here instead of using this kind of a configuration, a relatively smaller ring has been cut here and then we can cut the notches or add the stub along this, then this can be circular or alternatively we can have a this circular and we can cut notches or in this case we can add stub whatever way you would like to see. In a reality, this whole thing has been removed from this particular patch over here. So, these are several variations are there. Similar variations are also there for triangular, but as I mentioned earlier, I generally recommend that you use variations of rectangular or variations of circular microstrip antenna. So, these are all compact configurations. So, let us just look at now some broadband configurations also. After all, we do require broadband circularly polarized microstrip antenna. So, here I just want to tell whatever the broadband configurations we had studied earlier, which are also given in chapter 3, 4 and 5 of my book, they all can be suitably modified to obtain broadband circularly polarized antenna. So, here is a one example, this is a radiating edge gap coupled microstrip antenna. If I look from this feed point of view and for this feed point of view, this will be at along the null direction. But if you now look at this particular feed point, so in this case now, this is radiating edge. So, this will be more like a non-radiating edge gap coupled configuration. So, what really happens for this particular feed, we let us say choose one angle 0, we can choose one angle 90 degree or one angle minus 90 degree depending upon LHCP or RHCP is required. So, but I still do not recommend this configuration very strongly. The reason for that is as I mentioned earlier, for this field, this is radiating edge and we know that radiating edge field is uniform. So, we may need a little larger gap, but for this particular field here, this will act as a non-radiating edge and non along non-radiating edges, we actually have a sinusoidal field variation. So, for that particular case, coupling will be relatively weak. So, what happens for these two feed point then? For this feed point, there will be relatively stronger coupling. For this, it will be relatively weaker coupling. So, there will be some difference in the input impedance plot, but it gives a fairly good 
actual ratio bandwidth. So, but I do recommend this particular configuration. In fact, here what we do it is take all the parasitic patches equal. When you take all the parasitic patches equal, so let us again think about this feed point. So, for this feed point, these are the radiating edges, these are the non radiating edges. But for this feed point now, these are the non radiating edges, these are the radiating edges. So, in reality, the response will be similar because we have taken L1 equal for all the parasitic patches. So, here again we need to feed here let us say one angle 0, one angle 90 degree for LHCP and that can be obtained by using let us say we can use uh, on this on the top layer and underneath layer we can actually design a two branch 3 dB coupler and we can connect over here. But I also want to mention now it is very broadband configuration. So, even 3 dB two branch coupler which generally may have an acceptable bandwidth of about 20 percent and these configuration may give us bandwidth of about 25 percent or so. So, in that case instead of using 3 dB two branch coupler one can even use 3 dB three branch coupler or even 3 dB four branch coupler and there is a lot of area available underneath these patches. So, which can be utilized to excite all these antennas. Now, instead of going planar one can also go vertical also. So, here is the configuration where this is a stacked broadband circularly polarized square microstrip antenna that is important here. So, we have a square patch at the bottom layer, we have a square patch at the top layer. Here all the things are taken in air to realize very broadband antenna and again we can feed here one angle 0, one angle 90 or one angle 0, one angle minus 90 for RHCP. So, these are the different configuration. So, in the next lecture we will discuss about some more broadband configuration and uh, we will see that how we can also use these circularly polarized antenna in the form of an array and we will look into a very nice concept of sequentially rotated circularly polarized microstrip antenna which gives very broad band circularly polarized antenna. So, today we looked at single feed circularly polarized microstrip antenna and its variation. Then we also looked at compact microstrip antenna configuration and we also looked at a few broad band microstrip antenna configuration. So, we will see some more of these in the next lecture and then we will see very broad band microstrip circularly polarized antenna. So, thank you and we will see you next time. Bye.